So I think it's safe to say that Toji Fushiguro is one of the most popular characters in more or less all of anime now. I mean, Toji is extremely popular and it's been all over the internet for the last like six months. Of course, season two of JJK is like over and stuff. So the, the hype is slowing down just a little bit. But overall, Toji has been kind of like the Batman of anime to a large extent, where everybody has been extremely enjoying the idea of someone being super powerful, kind of unconventionally, you could say. With that said, I think the perfect person to give Toji's powers, or Toji's heavenly restriction to, would be Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. So I was wondering, what would have happened if Tanjiro actually had Toji's heavenly restriction? And for a lot of you, and I've been seeing this quite a bit, and I want to say I apologize for this. Some of you will say that they actually that you don't actually know what some of these uh, abilities or things are. So you kind of are asking me to explain it. For those who already know, I'm sorry, but we're going to do a little brief explanation on what Toji's Heavenly Restriction truly is. And we're going to talk about how in JJK, there is more or less something known as Cursed Energy. Cursed Energy is the ability to do various, various different things. Think of it as your key equivalent to Dragon Ball, if you want to put it in that perspective. But Cursed Energy is normally known to basically give people powers and the ability to do various different techniques that's why i kind of compare it to well key from dragon ball and everybody has their own little power system cursed energy gives the abilities to someone like gojo to do insane things more or less utilize limitless his six eyes and so on but also gives other people in the verse the ability to call forth different shikigami or other things like that using other abilities techniques um or maybe even domain expansions and stuff like that these are all different types of abilities someone with cursed energy could actually use now that's my brief ex explanation of what the power system is at least to a small extent toji has none of this Toji actually has zero cursed energy and is only able to use raw strength, ability, speed, quickness, and stuff like that. Now, you might be wondering, I mean, why, why is this the case? Well, that's where the heavenly restriction comes into play. Toji's heavenly restriction doesn't allow him to actually utilize cursed energy, but in turn actually gives him the ability to have superhuman like strength, speed, and so on, stuff like senses, and I mean, he's insanely, insanely powerful, just doesn't have cursed energy. And like I said, enhanced senses, enhanced strength, enhanced speed, enhanced uh, reflexes, um, and way better um, intellect or a very, gr like, very great tactical intellect tactician. It also helps that he is a trained assassin, so that is also to play in this whole, um, his abilities. But overall, Toji's heavenly restriction makes the person pseudo superhuman to a large extent. So now that you kind of understand what Toji's Heavenly Restriction is, then now let's implement it toward Tanjiro. How would Tanjiro, as a person, actually be affected by Toji's Heavenly Restriction? Well, there's two ways you could look at it, and these two ways are going to be drastically different, and one is going to be very rage-inducing for some people because power scaling is not my specialty and power scaling is a little bit annoying and I would like to stay away from it but I have to talk about it because it does um, involve Tondro's breathing styles. The first version would be that Tondro has Toji's Heavenly Restriction but he doesn't or isn't able to actually utilize a breathing style. This would put him in an odd scenario because the breathing style technique is the equivalent to curse energy you could kind of say just for the abilities that the breathing styles actually give. And the breathing styles would more or less give Tanjiro enhanced speed, enhanced strength, and, st and so on and so forth. But if you get rid of that entirely and make it so Tanjiro only has Toji's Heavenly Restriction, in my opinion, there are some fine lines that we would not be able to cross. A lot of people would disagree with me, and I've seen this quite a bit from a lot of my videos, but a lot of people would disagree saying that Toji is stronger than every single person in the Demon Slayer verse, but I've done videos more or less disputing or giving my opinion on why I don't believe that to be true, at least to a large extent. But I do believe that Tanjiro, if he couldn't use a breathing style and only was allowed to use 
the heavenly restriction or the powers from the heavenly restriction he would have no trouble in a, in a lot of these circumstances even though yes in my opinion toji is not equivalent to um soloing the demon slayer verse i do believe that toji's heavenly restriction on tondra would allow him to get through a ton of demon slayer very easily we're talking about the final selection which would be a massive breeze we're talking about the swamp demon which would be a massive breeze as well and as tondra learns and becomes more of a tactician on top of um more or less how toji was he would continue to grow and grow and grow just his raw strength power and so on just wouldn't grow as much as you would really want it to in which the breathing styles would directly help with now where things get really troublesome in my opinion would be the more or less the Rui fight and maybe even going into the Enmu and the Akaza fights. These fights are going to be a little bit more challenging, especially with a Tondro that doesn't have a breathing style. But I do want to bring in a couple things because yes, he might not be able to utilize breathing styles in this regard, but that doesn't make him useless by any means. This Tondro is still extremely powerful, so there's a good chance that him him and many others working all together would actually be able to take down the lot of demon slayer but there's just really really difficult hurdles like i've said before with akaza with um people like akaza and also kokushibo and people like doma these people are extremely powerful and i truly believe get underrated the mass majority of the time because of how limited we see of them on screen but at the same time, these beings are scaled differently to each other. If you're a higher demon, that means you are more powerful than the demon before you. It is as simple as that, and I think people more or less look over that and skip over that, because if Doma more or less is, is powerful enough, and this is just theoretical, to blow up a city, maybe a city block, maybe shoot maybe a, a large village and so on the person above doma would inherently be stronger than doma and that's just how the demon the demon uh rankings work in a large extent um and that's kind of just how you have to look at it in terms of the demons because there's a literal direct comparison um to upper moons upper moon one upper moon two upper moon three and so on um but overall i think with toji's heavenly restriction Tondra would have no trouble going through quite a bit of Demon Slayer. It's just when you get to maybe toward the Akaza fight um, with Rengoku where things get a little bit trickier. But at the same time, you could argue, and I, would, I wouldn't even deny this, a Tondro heavenly restricted like Toji and Rengoku versus Akaza might be a fight that they could win. And this, this Tondro isn't... Um, more or less the tactician that toji is and he isn't but he also doesn't have the ego that toji does he doesn't have this ego that is more or less overwhelming to the point where he's going to take on this person by himself no matter what or he's also going to only help based around money this is not that tondro or this is not that toji so we're dealing with a tondro that is morally pretty good with toji's heavenly restriction so tondro and also rengoku versus akaza would be a pretty darn close fight and just based on kind of um the matchups that tondro goes through that could be extremely helpful and there's a good chance that they actually get to the very end of this entire um and this of this entire gauntlet of demons and demon slayers and so on but i know some of you are wondering well what was the other pathway i mean assumingly if you are um kind of keeping up that other pathway would allow him to utilize breathing styles and i'm telling you breathing styles will help immensely immensely for various reasons for one Breathing styles are very similar to the way Toji's Heavenly Restriction already works in terms of a bonus in physical attributes, but breathing styles are literally built to multiply your strength, your stamina, your healing abilities, and so on. That's literally what a breathing style is, and that would include, well, leading up to a Demon Slayer mark, which I didn't even bring up in the grand scheme of things. If you could give Tondro a Demon Slayer mark with Toji's Heavenly Restriction, 
that version would most likely be able to defeat Demon Slayer. Maybe, depending on the, um, the vast amount of training he goes through. But if he has Toji's Heavenly Restriction with Sun Breathing, now we're dealing with a totally different beast. Now, I will skip through a little bit of Demon Slayer because if, if no breathing style Tondra was able to basically defeat all the way up until um, Rui and also past, uh, excuse me, Enmu as well, then there's no point really to talk about anything uh, before that because for the mass majority, he would be able to defeat a lot of these people. And if you even give Tondro a little bit of the tactician brain and also the martial artist uh, prowess that um, that, to that Toji actually has, I mean, he could have utilized and learned sun breathing on a lot, um, a lot earlier than usual. But we will just begin once again with um, with minor sun breathing, but also with Kyojuro Red Goku and also Tanjiro, of course, who has a breathing style, aka partial sun breathing and also water breathing, but also has Toji's Heavenly Restriction. But he is obviously lacking the Demon Slayer mark at this point. But this Tanjiro and this Ren Goku versus Akaza going head to head could genuinely kill Akaza. I, I, I always say like, oh, there's a chance Akaza survives or so on. But this version of Tanjiro is easily Hashira level and probably even far past Hashira level. Um, definitely on the upper echelon. So if you have a literal Hashira and then also Tanjiro who, or Tanjiro, excuse me, who is above a Hashira's level in my opinion being on the realm of uh of the stone hashira to that level because we know who you know he is the strongest the stone hashira and if he is on that level like i said he would easily them two tanjiro and rengoku and with the ability of basically understanding the movements that rengoku is going to go through once they get used to fighting with each other akaza would not stand a chance in this fight it would be a similar fight to uh, Tanjiro and Giyu, but in this regard, I know Red Goku is arguably a little bit weaker than Giyu, but Tanjiro makes up for that by a large margin, even though he doesn't even have a Demon Slayer mark. Like, I truly believe that this would balance out far greater than you could possibly imagine. I think the power threshold would be so much higher than a Giyu Tanjiro in the original timeline. This this power threshold would be better with a Tanjiro Rengoku just in this different um, universe we are talking about. So we would be down in Akaza for the final fight. And we'll be then transitioning into the Entertainment District arc, excuse me. And this arc would be a lot, a lot different, just all in regards of Daki versus Tanjiro. I mean, for starters, Tanjiro would easily be able to slice Daki's head off. So we'd be getting an interaction with Yutro, Tanjiro, and Daki a lot sooner, even before Tengen even shows face. But we know that Tengen is pretty impressive in his own right so once he shows up knowing that Gyutro and Daki are now awakened and now fighting Tanjiro I mean I don't see it going any other way but these two dying especially when Tanjiro and Tengen for the most part split up and go for both of the necks of Daki and um and Gyutro we know that Tengen could easily slice Daki's head off so if Tanjiro can go against Gyutaro by himself relatively easily, or at least kind of maintain relatively easily. They could easily cut off Daki's neck um, or D Daki's head very, 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 very simply, especially if Tengen is allowed to do so on his own, limiting all the injuries that Tengen goes through and so on. And I know I didn't bring this up, but Rengoku would be alive in this regard, and this would be a, an uninjured Tengen. And yes, I know. A lot of people will say, well, he was already planning on retiring after he killed a an upper moon or um, a demon. Like, this was going to be his last fight for the most part. And I do agree, but I, but I also understand that this Tengen is going to be a lot less injured and a lot less susceptible to injury in, in general. So I think he would put himself in a position to fight anyways. So we there's a good chance that we are up to Hashira compared to what we were in the original. And that would continue, the, the, that trend would continue on, especially after they defeat um, Han Tengu and also uh, Gyoko, which would be a very simple and basic way. 
And during this time, Tundra would definitely awaken his Demon Slayer mark, probably awakening it against an Akaza or against a Gyutaro, because, I mean, this is a 1v1. I mean, Tundra versus Gyutaro is a pretty good fight, one versus one. I don't see it being an easy one by any means, but it is semi-difficult for Tundra because, I mean, demons have so many advantages at the end of the day. And if it was Akaza versus Tundra 1v1, it would be a decently hard fight for Tanjiro just because of like the scale and power that these demons are at. But once he unlocks his Demon Slayer mark, this Tanjiro is at a totally different level than the one in the original canon. He has the base stats of a heavenly restricted Toji, but on top of that gets boosted with, well, you know, the breathing styles that would be water breathing or, well, sun breathing for the most part now. And as they continue training, going through the Hashira training arc and so on, his power would continue to grow and his strength would continue to grow and he would make everyone around him that much stronger. And I want to make that very clear. Normally in Demon Slayer, what we see is that the stronger the people are that you're training with, the stronger you eventually get. So this could be essentially a stronger version of Anosuke and Zenitsu. I mean, at the end of the day, they see Tondro as this prodigy, as someone that is so much stronger than them. So they have to do everything in their power to try and keep up. So these are stronger versions of Zenitsu and Anosuke at the end of the day, especially after the Hashira training arc leading into the Infinity Castle. But of course, like I said before, there is no Akaza, so there is a lot more people helping with either someone like Doma or someone like Kokushibo. We have an extra, um, we have two extra Hashira. If you want to get real nitty gritty, I guess you could say only one extra in that of Ren Goku. Um, but like, if you want to just exclude Tengen because Tengen retires, but for the most part, you have tons of advantages here because you have multiple other people uh, joining in. You have. Um, you have Giyu and Tanjiro free from the fight with Akaza because there is no fight with Akaza and and so on and so forth. So we're dealing with a lot easier or a far easier Infinity Castle and arguably a lot more Hashira and Demon Slayers to take on a final boss Muzan. But I think Tanjiro would, would for the most part be extremely, extremely powerful enough to take down and help take down Muzan and end this reign of tyranny now with that said we do get the the issue of well tondro turning into a demon this is a scary thing because this is a tondro that is a good bit stronger and we don't know how toji's heavenly restriction would affect him as a demon and this could make him substantially stronger as a demon two three four times stronger we don't know at least off off our top of our heads and we don't know how it would even interact with him becoming a demon in, in the grand scheme of things. But let's just say him becoming a demon, there's a good chance that it leads to some serious injuries or maybe even death. I mean, I would hope that that wouldn't be the case, but I feel like that's the harsh reality of him becoming an uncontrollable demon for a large to the large extent. I mean, um uh, for the most part though i mean i think this ends a happy ending i don't see tanjiro becoming a a demon and then becoming the king of all demons and then killing everybody i don't i don't see that happening that's not something that i would personally uh see occurring but maybe you think otherwise um if you do let me know in the comment section below this is the end of what a tanjiro had toji's heavenly restriction i want to bring this up because we're actually only doing one video a week from from here on for a little bit i'm not sure if we'll stick to this i'm not sure if we'll change it i would love to hear what you guys have to say uh say about this i was considering actually bringing back a uh a more narrative style of of what ifs on top of already doing this type of what if so maybe like the longer what ifs maybe like a couple parts and stuff like that um there would probably be zero editing probably just going to be like some background gameplay if we do get that type of content so let me know if you guys want to see that or if you're okay with just one video a week um i might i might consider like you know throwing in some other animes uh for a more narrative or story based style of video I haven't decided just yet if I'm gonna be doing like my hero again or or a longer winded Tondro or stuff like that. I haven't 100% decided yet, but if you enjoyed the video, 
I hope you did. Leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. All that good stuff. And I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.